Well, hello there, YouTube. Well, it's 6.57, and I am now in the golden hour at 6.57. Sunset today is at 6:50 or yeah 6:51. I meant to say 5:57. It's not 6 o'clock yet, but at 6:51 is sunset. So I'm literally like a minute, two minutes into the into the golden hour, which is no big deal. But it's sad that the days are getting that short. And I know I I know I harp on that each fall, but it saddens, it saddens me that my uh, my days of riding are rapidly coming to an end, and nothing you can do about it. I mean, I can ride in the rain and the cold and everything else, but uh, you, you lose everything around here when it rains. Like just looking out over that house, you barely, well, you probably can't see it, <laughs> you probably can't see it anyway, but... But it just gets so, uh, when it rains, you just can't see. There's no distance to anything. You have no sense of, of bearings, you know, from the mountains and whatnot. If it's a light drizzle and it's got low hang or, you know, clouds above, you can see some things. But it just has that drab look to it. God, it just kills me that people lost their house. Every time I see that, I think of them poor old people. You see them out in the yard every once in a while. You know, it's funny as you always see deer eating out of their front lawn. And uh, the smell of that fire must spook them because uh, I haven't seen a deer in their yard since the house burnt down. But the, uh, the special series... I was uh, looking forward to doing a, uh, you know, come and get her. <laughs> She's for sale, come and get it vlog. But uh, a really nice gentleman that we'll call Glenn is, uh, he's gonna buy it. And uh, the only thing that would uh, spin that out is if for some reason uh, they would, they don't give him the, the right trade in or whatever they'll, they'll do him right though they'll, they'll get him in it but the nice thing about that is the bike will be close and uh not that there's a lot of maintenance or anything on these to speak of so i won't see him very often but he's a super super nice guy and he comes in a lot like today you just come in just to say hey he had actually left me a message last night wanting to know when it was going to be turned in and uh, I was going to call him when I got to work today, but got uh, got busy and sidetracked. And all of a sudden, here's this smiling face. He was down there in the Spiders in the Redwoods with us. Oh, it's that beautiful, all them fields. Oh, my Lord. Um, he was going to ride down with us. Actually, we were going to ride with him, but Kelly and I had other ideas of what we're going to do besides the spiders in the redwood so we uh she's a little bush on the side of the road. i thought something was standing there for a second um so we ended up leaving on sunday with the with a little group of the spider rider of america the columbia river chapter there our local chapter in the portland the greater portland area Actually, it extends all the way up to to a Longview and stuff. I I think by the time you're here in Toledo, there's a, a chapter in Tacoma, Olympia, something like that. I don't know. Sorry to point you right in the sun, but I need to see if I can beat that car that's coming down the road. But anyway, uh, he was down there. He uh, he couldn't leave with us on. On Sunday, because he had some commitments that he had to take care of, so he bombed down. I think he, I think 
he came down on Tuesday, maybe came down on Monday and we seen him on, on Tuesday. I don't recall, but anyway, he's down there. It's always nice to see him. He's always so friendly and just just a super, super nice guy. And um jeez, I am still stuffed full. I had three God, that's gorgeous. Had three pieces of uh, pizza today. A, a customer had bought the parts department some pizza. And the parts manager comes back and says, "Hey, it's pizza. Come have some." So I had a couple of kind of small pieces, and then Sean, S H A W N. I won't tell you his last name, but super nice. These are oh, he, he's a multitude of things. These uh, are parts. To service, he's our link to parts in the service department. But he does way more than that. He he uh, works as a TSM or team service manager, service writer, if you want to simplify that term. He uh, he does that and answers the phones a lot. Super nice guy. Oh, look at that. That was a chaser. But um. Anyway, he bought pizza for us today. So, I like pepperoni, and I open up the pepperoni box, and all there was was these, like, huge pieces. It's this pizza parlor that's literally right on the edge of our parking lot. They're really cheap and really, really good pizza. So, you know, I already had those two, and I, uh, <laughs> I thought, man... I haven't eaten any of my lunch yet. I'm hungry. I'm game. So I, I should have just not grabbed that third piece. Because that one, uh, that one done me in. And, uh, geez, that was at like, what was that? 1, 1 somewhere there. Maybe it was even earlier than that. With all that pepperoni of whatever, there was one. The first piece I had was this kind of combination with lots of onions. And, ooh, I like them when they're dirty like that. But uh, anyway, the pizza made me thirsty. I, I've probably drank a half gallon of water since then. So between all the water and the pizza, I still, all these hours later, I still feel stuff. So that was a little sidetrack there. Look at the crazy way that one's changing colors. But uh, anyway, uh, Glenn is going to buy this in case, unless something goes weird, which I, I uh, highly doubt that would happen. But um, so there'll be no announcement that it's for sale unless something weird happens. You just never know. Oh, I don't know if you guys ever notice this. I even used it in the vlog as a thumbnail for one of my vlogs. I was flipping through. And I just happened to stop, for whatever reason, stop the editor, and I'm like, I don't remember a horse running beside me, and I look at that thing, and I go, what the hell? It's one of those metal statue things of a, whoa, of a horse. I thought that guy was pulling out of somewhere. He was just driving, <laughs> he was just driving down the road. Actually, he might have pulled out of that driveway right there. Oh, it's a goat. I was about to say, what the hell is that standing there? It's a black goat. What's with all the cars back here? I never see cars. I'm seeing more cars here lately than I've seen in quite a while. Avoid the, the little triangle shit collector there in the turn. So, she has a home. It'll be local up here. I, I'm still, I still get that, excuse me, I still get asked all the time. Now I get asked about Harleys or other motorcycles. And then uh, inevitably they'll go, well, I know she ride that Spider a lot too. You know, what do you, what do you think of the Spiders? You know, what's that like? You know, and I haven't talked about that for a bit. So I'll just briefly kind of touch on that. It's... The experience as you're going down the road is just like riding on a motorcycle. Now granted, this RT, the Roadster Tour, is probably more like riding a, a Goldwing or an Electroglide or something like that. 
I'm probably there's a sack in the water down there what the hell that sucks there's some easy way down there I crawled in there and dig that thing out but uh I'd say for coverage wise it's probably more like a gold wing and comfort as well but uh you know it, they handle different you know like in a turn like it's wanting to make me roll out and it makes me want to roll out it doesn't lean there's no gyro effect from the two wheels so you don't lean into the turns you personally lean into the turns but the bike falls away a body rolls away from you just like a car would do and uh, oh, look how pretty that is you know and if you've been riding motorcycles for years and years and years that that may seem a little odd to you and it it was odd to me too but you, you get used to it so quick and it's it's just a different riding experience but ultimately driving down the road is just like riding a motorcycle the handling's different you don't ever have to put your feet down you got reverse and all these other cool things um, but it's like riding a motorcycle. I don't know any better way to describe it. The effect you have and the freedom you have driving down the road is just like a motorcycle. It's just different. My favorite little thing is, is no less fun. It's just, it's different, but it's no less fun. And uh, that just sums it up all in a nutshell very very few people the only people I ever say they don't like spiders that have ridden one is it rode one really quick and some kind of a test ride the thing was probably not aligned or God only knows what was wrong with it and um, they just didn't like it you know it takes more exposure than that you know find a dealer that will actually let you take it for a ride and any of you know, don't ride some old clapped out used one with a million miles and, you know, it's never been a line. Nobody's ever taken care of it or God knows what, you know. Take a new one for a ride. You know, with every product, they improve with every year. They get better and better and better. Like the RTs, you know, in 2013, the chassis completely changed. 2014, similar basically the same chassis with the new 1330 triple motor in there you ride one of these and jump on a, a 2010 through 2012 art oh man that is really strong smelling and it is a totally different experience I mean you're riding a bike that's about the same size for the most part but the handling, the, oh man, the brakes, the power, the power everywhere. It's like a car motor. It just has power all the time. It's like riding a Harley. You know, it's just, there's no, I mean, you, you could be idling along or you could be bombing along. You can rev it, you can lug it. It's just, it just has power everywhere. And uh, should you select the big touring model? It's not, you know, I preach this all the time. This is not an old man thing. The RT, the RT did bring a, a lot of the older crowd in. You know, kind of the same people that would buy a Goldwing for the most part. And uh, so people, especially younger guys or guys that think they know but have no clue, you know, I get these little comments, yeah, if I ever get old enough, I can't hold up a two-wheeler anymore, I might think of one of those. It's like, dude, you are, you are missing out on something really, really cool. These things are wicked-ass cool. And they're always fun. I mean, it's never like you jump on and go, oh, I should have taken my motorcycle, this thing sucks. Never, ever do you feel that way. In fact, when I'm off off of it for a while and then I jump back on it, I, I, I get that delightful feeling like I get when I haven't rode my iron in a while. It's just like this smile. It's like, yeah, baby. It's nice. Let's just goof off here a little bit. <laughs> I'm 
I'm not gonna take you down there. I'm just gonna goof off. If somebody's out in their yard, they're probably going, hey, what the hell's that guy doing? <laughs> you can tell no. <laughs> there is people standing out there. <laughs> What an idiot. Me, that is. Oh, look at that. That sunset glistening across, hitting that old barn out there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, they're not an old person's or crippled or, you know, someone with some kind of a disability of some sort. That's not who spiders are for. You, if you don't believe me, look up on spiders thing or, or just look in your Facebook, your local spider rider chapter. Find out when they're doing something. There's no charge to show up at these things. Motorcycles show up all the time. People not even riding their motorcycles. They just show up. Show up and look at all the people that are there. They range from late teens, early 20s to in their 90s. It is not what you buy when you can't ride a two-wheeler anymore. Absolutely not. That is a foolish and very uneducated statement to make. That just screams, screams what you know about them. It's what you think you know about them. That's just foolish. And the nice thing is, I only get that in like comments and stuff. Because the people that come in, look at them, buy them, whatever, they're not like that at all. But, you know, I will admit that it's usually the older crowd that'll buy the RT. They want to, they got plenty of money. They want to just drive in all the creature comforts that an RT provides. And they are comfortable. Uh, let's do it now. Ooh. spin you out on that thing right quick. This probably just be a glare in your face. I think this thing actually loops through. Unless it stopped. Kind of creepy that there's a graveyard out there. Oh, no. She, uh, she had a falling out and the road's blocked. Oh, yeah, look at that. The road, the road tumbled off down the hill. Oh, that's creepy. Now who would come out here in the country and dump their garbage? Look at that. Oh no. They took the road away when they, when they built that. Look at that. There's the road. Very interesting. So anyway, with spiders, they're very, very, very fun. Looks like something for a... Well, I'm not sure what that is. Looks like it might have been some kind of a bag of some sort with all the, all the D-rings and stuff on it. I would drive you through the uh, graveyard over there, but... That's a little... It's a little too much for me, I think. Very interesting. Well, if I come through here, I'd just be pointing you in the sun anyway if I pulled into that little side road. There's a guy out there on the Harley. Must have a, must have a friend that's, uh, that's living out there now. He's probably definitely wondering what the heck I'm doing. But uh, for any, I know, you know, there's a lot of people hinging back and forth on whether they get a spider or a big touring bike or whatever. It's like I say with everything, which one talks to you? And I know you're not going to know, you probably know motorcycles, but you're not going to know spiders. You need to, you just need to take one for a ride. There's very few, I guess maybe the real small dealers, but... Any uh, 
any BRP dealer is going to have a demo for you to ride. If you live around here, by God, come by and take this one for a ride. If you're looking for something a little sportier, there's a demo F3 sitting there. If you want something that hauls butt and handles like, like a little Ferrari, <laughs> take that thing for a ride. That'll get your jollies. Man, that thing is quick. <coughs> Not that this one's a slouch. three weighs over 200 pounds less than this thing. It's geared down a little better, a little freer airbox, a little freer exhaust, and yeah, buddy, she gone. I know that's a dead end road, and I know it's probably going to end at somebody's house. That must be my little wife texting me that she's on her way home. Or, yeah. girlfriend there let's take you some some gravel road run in here how about that I tell you never take these things down gravel roads I ain't gonna hurt you you just got to keep your speed down one of the easiest ways to know if you're going too fast you start hearing rocks flipping around in your fenders like your front fenders or whatever you're going a little too fast just back her off I start every oh no look I'm kicking up dust all this stuff has been dry enough that um, <laughs> there's been no dust and that's gonna make the back wheel look gray but you know people hear about getting rocks in the belts and stuff like that so they avoid all dirt roads I generally tell people to try to stay off of them because you know telling them to go slow on them just doesn't seem to register tell them to just stay completely off of them that that sinks in so I ride it down dirt road all the time there is a huge hawk sitting in that field man there's no way you'd see that thing that is one big hawk Yeah, you'd never see that. That's cool as hell. I'm sure it's got something on the ground it's a chawing on. Whoa. <laughs> Let go of the throttle, but flip myself across the nose there. Oh, yeah, it's kicking up some dust. But there's some uh, beautiful golden color out there I want you to see. Because once I go down here and take a ride, it'll, be, it'll all be gone. Look at that. That'd be fun to just take off and go bombing out across that, wouldn't it? And regular dirt roads are definitely no big deal because there's not much loose stuff to kick up and go flying around. But you'll hear there's nothing flipping through the fenders. It's when rocks get to flipping all around in there. That's when they can bounce around you know, in the rear fender well area there, and, and you get enough of them bouncing around, eventually one's gonna land on the bottom side of the belt as it's heading for the rear pulley and get caught in there. And the belt's tight enough that it'll, it'll kind of wedge that rock in there. And very seldom does a rock wedge in, I just wanna look in my rear view mirror, wedge in enough that uh, if you don't catch it, you can't, you know, flip it out and no harm no foul and uh, they'll definitely make a click the rear sprockets aluminum the front sprockets steel and you'll hear this weird kind of out of time click you know the clicking sound you hear in your in your tire when you when you pick up a rock in your tire and you go tick 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 you can tell it's the rotational speed of the tire. You know it's a rock in your tire. Or, <laughs> like me, it always worries me. I'm thinking, oh shit, I picked up a nail. Because the nail will make that click, click, click sound too. These uh, spiders, when you get one wedged in the belt, and uh, it ain't wedged in deep enough to hurt anything, like I say, right at first. I'm sure you can get a certain shape or size rock that could damage something right away, but that'd be pretty rare. But, uh, 
you'll hear you'll hear this weird out of tune because the belt's like extremely long so it takes a long time for it to uh to make its <laughs> make its way to the front sprocket you won't hear it in the rear but you'll hear it right there by your left foot you'll hear tick they go along a little bit tick go along a little bit tick you can tell it's not the speed that your tires are going just pull over find some level ground somewhere or have somebody help you and on an RT it's a little little trickier you got to get on your knees and you know just look or just keep rolling her up a little bit find that little rock and you can usually just flip it out with your finger if not you know take your little toolkit out and take a little flat blade or something and just flip that rock out of there and uh, take off it's no big deal by far the belt drive is is probably the cleanest most reliable and probably one of the most efficient drives you know you can't I don't think you can lay like massive massive horse to power to them like you can a chain you know and it, and the reason a lot of race bikes and everything are still chain is it's just so easy to change you know your gearing it is a big deal <laughs> to do something like that with this with a belt drive and here's my paved road get a little weaving to knock some stuff out here so anyway I have there's no no time that I uh, that I ever think about riding a spider and go ah, the hell with that I want to ride a two-wheeler just kind of whatever I'm in the mood for Oh, there's some pretty leaves on the ground here. But they're very, very fun. And like I say, you know, you'll go through that little bit of a learning curve. Doesn't take, oh, I'm gonna leave you right in the sun. Doesn't take much of a learning curve. It all happens pretty quick. And, uh, and like I say, next thing you know, you can be driving down the road not even thinking about it. In fact, it, it can be bad enough that, uh, <laughs> yeah, like I do, sometimes I get a little carried away and I forget that I'm as wide as I am up there. And I look down and I'll have the left wheel over the line. Or you're dropping the right wheel in a, in a right-hand turn. But, uh, because you just forget. You're not on a motorcycle. You get so used to it, you forget that you know you're not leaning in and that gyro effect of the wheels that's the only reason a motorcycle leans in a turn you got two wheels sitting forward and aft and you have that gyro effect you know and there's no counter steer you know like like if I wanted to turn right I would physically turn left and the motorcycle would go right because you're fighting against a gyro on a spider it's just like a car you want to go right you turn right left you turn left so uh, all that just takes a little bit of getting used to but uh, ride one see for yourself them Canadian geese there'll be millions of them out in that field tonight you'll hear them all night long if you come out I need to take my quadcopter and fly out over them but I'll probably get in trouble for scaring them anyway <laughs> with the sunset in your face I'm gonna let you guys go I appreciate you watching and uh I, I thank you very, very much for all the comments and likes and all that stuff. And we'll chit-chat with you on the next vlog. We'll see you later now. Take care. Have a wonderful day now. Bye-bye.